What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is my review of episode 2 of Halo. So just before we go ahead, I'm going to warn you, this is a full on spoilers because there's no way that I'm going to be able to express what I want to express without touching on any spoilers. So you've been warned, spoilers ahead. Okay, so this episode has really, really thrown a spanner in the works for me because, oh God, where do I start? Okay, so I'm just going to go straight into the main thing that bothers me in this episode. Well, one of the main things. There is a few things. First of all, Master Chief does not wear his helmet at all in this. Like, at all. Like, he does put it on once or twice for about 10 seconds, and then that's it. I know that he's not going to wear his helmet all the time. I've already accepted that. I don't like that decision. For me personally, it doesn't work. I, I would prefer to have him not take his helmet off at all. Or maybe once here and there, right? I don't mind seeing his face. It is a new thing after all. It is a new series. So, like, why not? Like, I don't mind him actually taking the helmet off here and there. But, like, not... <laughs> don't have him just going about with no helmet on and also having no armor on at all because in this this episode he actually takes his, all his armor off a couple of times and that was just so weird to see I just personally cannot see past it because it just doesn't feel like Halo at all like this episode does not feel like Halo at all like, at all I, I just I could not get past it I was like I'm watching this series because I'm here for Halo but I'm not getting Halo I'm just getting a pretty alright sci-fi series that's covered in Halo stuff. So it's a really conflicting thing for me because I'm actually enjoying it. I'm actually enjoying the episodes. Uh, the first episode for me was pretty decent. I liked it. There were some problems, but I did actually overall think it was a really decent episode. This episode declines quite a lot for me. I'm just surprised. Just really unsure, like, who this series is made for. Like, I really just don't get it. Master Chief, for me, is just... He is not this character. And I get it's a completely different character. It's a different storyline. It's a different narrative. It's not canon. I understand that. I'm actually quite up for having the story, the narrative, being completely different. But at least just keep the core elements of Halo there. Like, at least have Master Chief in this outfit, in the helmet going about doing these sick missions like taking on the covenant with the marines and unsc and all the different spartans and really sick things going on whilst him and cortana are like having this beautiful romance together in this relationship and they're going through you can have all the emotion there that you that this series wants you to get from a character that's why they're wanting you to see his face and seeing him about the armors because they want to humanize him so that the audience can sort of connect to him but they can do that without showing his face we've already experienced that with the mandalorian people are going to complain saying well it isn't the mandalorian i know it isn't but the mandalorian has shown you that you can do a full series without even seeing the person's face and absolutely love that character. We know that you can because we spent 20 years playing as Master Chief without taking his helmet off. And there's many, many emotional moments. You can feel his character and his personality through the helmet. Like, he doesn't need to take it off. So that's where I stand with this. Like, I am, an, I am actually enjoying it. I do feel like it is just a random sci-fi series now. This episode felt like just not Halo at, at all, but then we've just got Halo characters just thrown in there. And I'm going to go into this in a second, but even some of the characters in Halo that they've actually changed the species of to humans in this, which I'm going to talk about in a moment, but anyway. So for me, it's just something that I'm just struggling personally to sort of look past when he does when master chief does put his helmet on the two times that he does in this episode i genuinely feel like oh yes halo again it, it really makes me feel like oh yes it's halo but then that's really short-lived because he spends the whole episode without any helmet on and his armor and some of it so it's just weird for me and at one point throughout this i just had to accept like this just isn't the halo that you're gonna want i i accepted that anyway but now after seeing episode two it's like okay this really isn't 
anything close to what you was hoping it was going to be and you're just going to have to just accept it and just see it for what it is and I think I got to that point at some point and I just sat back and went fuck it like whatever and I did actually start to enjoy it so in the end of this I did enjoy the episode there are some really good moments in this for me personally I kind of feel like my most enjoyable things at the moment is when it's to do with the covenant and the covenant covenant is hardly there which is I guess it's a bit shit, but like for me, whenever I see High Charity and we're with the prophets and we can see all the the Covenant and even Marky, the, the, the female human who's part of the Covenant, I'm even really interested to see more of her. I want to know what's what she's about. Uh, there's a theory which I'm going to tell you about in a moment which I really hope isn't true. There's a theory about her which is going to be so bad if it turns out to be true. But anyway, the Covenant side of it I love. I wish there was more of that. I wish really that the story was like the Arbiter and, and um, Master Chief. I wish it was kind of about them too done in a different story to what we've already had i mean i would have loved the original story but if we're going to do a different timeline a different canon great fine but just it would have been great with them too but anyway the covenant is something i get really excited about when i see them i think they look great i love that presence in the high charity it's really cool there was a really cool pelican scene where the pelicans flying through the asteroid belt to get to the rubble this scene was sick and i just wish that master chief had his helmet on because it would have felt like Master Chief, it, it was such a cool scene of the Pelican, like, doing so many sick maneuvers, like, it's all over the place, it's flying all over, and it would have been so cool if we'd seen in the, in the cockpit, actually, Chief with his helmet on, because it would have felt like, that's Master, that's, that's my Chief doing that. But there's also, in this scene, it was some really, really sloppy writing. It, I, I actually found it quite hilarious because in this scene, the pelican is flying all over the place. It's literally like, vew, 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 like doing backflips, spinning around, going upside down fast as fuck through this asteroid belt, pretty much not getting through loads of different gaps and places and just managing to get through is literally going all over the place. And Quan Ha's just sat next, next to the seat, not even strapped in going... Ah! Ah! I was like, that is so stupid. I cannot believe the writers have written this absolutely insane scene with a pelican doing literally light speed, flying around these asteroids, and Quan Ha is not even strapped in. She's actually just sat next to the seat with the straps next to it, screaming. I was like, that would never happen. She would have been doing backflips. A whole skull would have been smashed in all over the place, brains everywhere. Chief would have had brains all over his face. And I just found that so stupid. I really did think that oh, I can't believe they've just not written her to just be sat in the seat strapped in. Eventually, we do arrive at the rubble, and it's really cool to see. The rubble looks sick. Uh, Soren is there. We get to see Soren, which was a cool moment to see him. Obviously, now they're older, and they haven't seen each other for a while. It was a bit weird because, obviously, when we see Soren when they're younger, John's about to shoot him, kill him, because he's, he wants to leave. Soren wants to break away and break out and have freedom because this is actually from canon which was cool to see but Soren wants to break away because he doesn't want to be part of the program no more he knows how dangerous it is he doesn't want to have the control over him from Dr. Halsey and UNSC and he wants to break away but John's going to literally kill him and that's the last time they've seen each other I suppose and now they see each other and it's like hey come on in it was just a little bit like all right but it was still cool to see him and i really did like soren in this but then again we have a really stupid scene that i thought was really badly written again where they're inside that little cube tram that metal tram thing that goes through the asteroid uh through the rubble i just thought like even though it was a really cool scene we've got some really sick like environmental shots where it comes out and it opens up to this huge sort of well the inside the asteroid and there's just so many different places going on it looked really sick i loved it but that that whole scene was ridiculous that tram, that little tiny square cube, is going about 300 miles an hour, like the craziest, steepest roller coaster you've ever been on in your life. And they just stood there going, you're right, yeah, yeah, good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you again, son. How have you been? You know what? I've been all right. How have you been, John? Well, you know, I've got this fucking briefcase on me with something in it. Why don't you have a look? Yeah, come to my house. We'll check it out. <laughs> I just honestly thought, like, oh, my God, like, that is, again, they're not strapped in, but whatever whatever it's just you know suspend your disbelief as much as you can anyway it was still a cool scene i won't take that away from it anyway we get to meet soren's family which was really bizarre for me i found it really strange i couldn't get over the fact that soren stood there in this like full-on super soldier exosuit metal massive armor suit and then his wife is like 
dressed like she's from the 1930s with like lipstick on, her hair all done up, like a red flower, a fluffy dress, and she's got like, I don't even know if she has this, but I imagined her to have this. She probably hasn't. I think I'm making it up, but let's go ahead with it anyway. She's got a long cigarette and a plastic thing in between her mouth, and she's got lipstick all over it. Don't think that was in it, but she should have had that. I don't know. It just seemed really weird. I just didn't like that design at all. And then they're smoking some sort of like Halo Universe drug which from this gas mask, which... I mean, I don't know. It just it just didn't feel Halo at all. Master Chief then shows Soren what's in the briefcase, which is obviously the Covenant artifact. Soren touches it, nothing happens, which then confuses John because he's like, what the hell? What's going on? And they need some answers. So, so, so Soren explains that they have a guy who's staying there in the rubble whose name's Reth, and he's been captured before by the Covenant and let go, or he's managed to escape, and he's now with them at the rubble. He knows a lot about the Covenant. Maybe they should go and show him at this artifact and see if they can get any information from him. So this is something that I didn't know at the time whilst watching this. Um, I did find this out afterwards, and now knowing this is really annoyed me. I found this information out through watching the videos of Hidden Xperia. If you don't know who he is, go and follow him on YouTube right now. If you like Halo, Hidden Xperia is the best. He's absolutely sick. I love him. So anyway, I got this from his information. He's like fully clued up on all Halo lore. So I trust every word that comes out of his mouth. Basically, Reth is a character from Halo, uh, original canon that is a, actually a jackal. He's a jackal that was came came away from the Covenant and started to work alongside the humans in the rubble. And he actually is a, is a jackal. But in this episode, he's a human. So they've actually completely species swapped a character, which is really, I don't know, it's really annoying that they've done that because this kind of opens up the possibility for the next thing that I'm gonna tell you in a minute which is very worrying. The theory, the main theory that I want to talk about, which is really worrying, and that's opened up the idea that this could actually happen. But anyway, this scene was actually quite fun. I did actually enjoy the guy who plays Ref. At, thir at first, I was like, it's a little bit exaggerated. He's crawling all over the floor, but whatever. And I did actually enjoy him in the end. I thought the actor did a good job at being this crazy guy. I found him pretty fun. And then obviously now he explains to John after they have this moment where John ends up touching the artifact again. And it does that crazy EMP pulls across the rubble. Then Ref tells John that basically this artifact, you need to destroy it, it's going to destroy the planet and he needs to destroy himself. Then Chief has this like panic attack and runs off, because obviously Chief would do that. <laughs> he runs off and then realises, shit, he needs to go back to the UNSC, which I thought was like, really? What, you going to suddenly go back there? But alright, he has to leave Quan there at the rubble, because obviously she's going to be executed if he takes her back. I got the idea he needed to take her somewhere to rescue her, but I did find it a little bit like... Well, that felt a little bit like waste of time, didn't it? So then John, Master Chief, leaves. He goes back to the UNSC to find Catherine Halsey, to find someone who he trusts, to find some answers. John's now feeling things for the very first time. And I quite like that. I quite like... I, I don't mind this side. Um, we have got a completely different Master Chief to what we probably wanted. But seeing as though we've got this Chief, I do actually like Pablo Shriver as the character as Master Chief. I think he does a good job. Um... I actually like him as Chief, and I like the storyline that he's going through. It's not the best. I would have done way different things, but I'm okay with it. But yeah, for what it is, I'm alright with it. So, coming to the one thing that I... The theory that I've been hearing about. There is talks about this being a thing, and I just really, really hope that this is not a thing. Because if it is, it's going to be an absolute nightmare, and I'm really, really worried about it. Basically, there's a lot of talk and theories around that Marquis, the human female who's part of the Covenant, is actually going to be replacing the Arbiter. Like, oh my god, if that actually happens, that's going to be absolutely devastating because it would have been incredible to see the Arbiter. The Arbiter is one of my best characters, my most favourite characters in Halo all time. I would, I'm dying to see him again because we haven't seen him for ages. I would love to see him in live action. And the idea that we might not ever see him in live action because now Mark, he's going to replace him is just devastating. At first, I was denying this. I was like, no way. Like, when I was listening to Hidden Xperia talk about it, I was like, there's no way. Nah, they're not going to do that, surely. But now that they've species swapped Ref to, from a jackal to a human, why wouldn't they do that for something else? Maybe because of the budget. I don't know why they would make these decisions. Uh, the budget would make a good reason as to why, but the reason that kind of makes me 
convinced it could happen is because Marquee, uh, it shows her with a big scar on, the, on her back. And the Arbiter has a scar similar to this, which is the mark of shame. And it could be that she has that same mark of shame. And she is the Arbiter. Oh, it's the same thing. Oh, please, please don't do that. Please don't do that. That's going to devastate so many of us. I just really hope that that doesn't happen. And then at the very, very end of this episode, Cortana opens her eyes and I'm just not actually looking forward to seeing more of it. Of course I am in a way because it's Cortana, but I'm genuinely not even interested in seeing more of this type of Cortana because it isn't Cortana to me. So that is another thing that's let me down. Do you know what? Because it is Halo, I am looking forward to seeing more, but that's only because I want to see more Halo stuff. Really, I'm not looking forward to the next episode. There's nothing like, oh, I can't wait for that. It just feels like, oh, God. Oh, no. Like, Cortana, I'm just, I just don't know what they're going to do with her. Like, I really hope that they somehow manage to still get her as a hologram for Chief. But then she's just going to look like a human. But then she's also like a human robot in the, in the real world. So I don't know what's going to happen about that we're gonna have to wait and see but i am a little bit worried about that so anyways guys that's my rant review uh, i am enjoying this I, I do think it's gonna get better i'm just concerned because this is only episode two and it was a proper letdown i felt like and it just doesn't feel like halo although there is some good stuff going on so we're just gonna have to wait and see for me if i was gonna rate this it's very difficult i don't really know where i'm at i'm kind of torn between a five and a six but i did enjoy it it is a little bit above average because as a show in general, I think it's above average. So I'm going to have to give this a 6 out of 10. Anyways, guys, that's my review. I hope you did enjoy it. Please hit the like button if you did. And also let me know down in the comments what did you think. Do you agree or disagree with what I've said? I would love to know what you think down below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time on WAF World.